video is going to be a tutorial on how we get our realistic rock finish. Um, there's a whole heap of stuff out on YouTube. We've kind of taken what we think is the best bits from each. Um, mostly a knife technique, but I've added some of some extra procedures for the finishing. We start with this stuff, extruded polystyrene. It's pretty cheap. You can buy it from your local insulation place usually. We just glue it together with wood glue. Um, and as you can see here, I've got a bit of a bit of a structure. This is the basic sort of shape for the cliff that's going to transition from our lower level up to our high level. Um, once you get the basic shape, then we'll start carving it. Before we carve out all the rocks, we're going to glue them together. What I use for gluing this stuff together, I've got a board here. It's just a bit of um, um, self-adhesive sandpaper. 3M make this, a roll of this stuff, which is uh, really good. It lasts for ages. This extruded foam has got a bit of a shiny surface to it. So all I do is just give it a bit of a rub. Just takes the, the sheen off it and gives the glue a bit more tooth. That's all you have to do. So what do we need? Not much. This is a fishing knife I got from Big W. It cost me about five bucks. It's pretty sharp and it's good for slicing in and chipping bits off to get that realistic sort of broken rock look. I'll show you that in a sec. Probably going to need a sharpen at some point, but at the moment it's fine. I've also got one of these Stanley type thin blades if I need to do any more sort of accurate work. Type 1 1 dries a bit harder, so it's probably going to be a little bit harder on the tools. So I'm told in instrument making circles. Um, type on 2, which is the slightly more weatherproof version, um, supposedly is a little bit less hard when, it, when it's, when it's um, dry. Um, the dry is sort of yellow, but it doesn't matter because you're going to paint over it anyway. I guess the trick here is, and we haven't really done a lot of this yet, is to, if you're going to have sections that join together, you've got to think ahead a bit to make sure that when you join one section to another, you get a natural seam. Anything that's flat, or like a perfect 90 degree angle, like in here. These are sections you want to hide with your carving. So what I'll probably do is, I'll probably carve in that way. So this whole flat section here will angle inwards, so the cliff sort of overhangs over the track. And I'll try to break up these, um, these straight lines in here as well. See in here there's a there's a join line where I join have to glue a couple of bits of foam together. What we're gonna do is break up any of those unnatural lines to kind of trick the eye and lead the eye elsewhere. What I will do in this case is just fill this line with a bit of uh, top coat. This is the stuff you use in jip rocking or sheeting uh, internal walls. And the good thing about this stuff is it dries well it dries pretty quickly but it also dries really soft so it's easy to sand if you need to clean up or scrape bits out with a knife or something so it just takes away that unnatural line just got a wet rag here just wipe that stuff away And it doesn't really matter too much because it's all going to be 
put it in the end. I've got the second piece here ready that's going to sit on top of this main section that we're working on here. This is the next ledge. It's got a bit of an angle underneath it. You can see that. So it's not always flat stacked. Just to break up the um, the glue lines a bit more. So this bit's going to sit on top of the bit we're working on. Slight overhang. So um, just to help hide the glue line a bit. Um, it's going to be pretty dark in these cracks. So it should be pretty hard to distinguish where the glue lines are. One of the things you've got to watch out for, I've noticed, with this stuff is if you leave any sort of furry bits behind, like this little tiny bit here, when you paint that it looks really obvious and it really looks like foam. So once you once I finish carving, I'm going to go through really carefully and just get all these little daggy bits off. One of the other things I've been doing is um, just kind of carving in like this at an angle with the sharp blade and then just busting these bits off. It leaves like a natural sort of ledge. Just got to try and, if possible, avoid getting that saw, that knife sawing look. So I mean, sometimes I need to go back over it again and just make sure there's no hee haw hee haw sort of marks. And again, here's, here's an example where I need to break up this this um, glue line. So I'm just going to come across here, snap off a bit. It might come in a bit again. Don't want to go too crazy here because I'm going to have another piece glued on top. Then, because there's some knife marks there, I might just come up at a different angle like this. Shave that off. Again, shave these little pieces off here. And then, if I put in like a little straddle line there. Bust off another bit. And sometimes the random things that happen are the best. Sometimes you get little bits of foam wedged in these cracks. It actually look pretty good when they're painted up because it looks like you know natural pieces of rock that's kind of fallen off over time and jammed itself in the rock. And I just want to start peppering some of these um, surfaces. I do it with a wire brush and also a paintbrush. The wire brush gives you sort of deeper holes and it's pretty gentle, you don't want to hit it too hard. Now if you can see that it just starts to look a bit more ancient. Here we have a wooden tunnel entrance which is going to sit just in here. Just painted these black studs up and up the timber so um, they're still a bit wet so I've got to be careful. But you can see in here, in this space here, there's a gap to fill. So I've got to make some more artificial rock for that space. So I've made one already. This is just a bit of offcut I found that I carved in two pieces using the same technique. Um, and it'll fit just in there. And the tunnel entrance will sit in there. I won't put that in now because it's all a bit fragile. There are two ways you can prime the foam. With a solvent based spray on, such as this Rust-Oleum flat grey primer, or with a water based acrylic, which is your standard art paint. And you can buy that stuff, it doesn't need to be fancy. Um, both methods will work and they both give you a slightly different effect. As you can see here, um, on the left I've used the solvent based primer and the solvent based primer will take away some of the detail. It will round the edges, it will form little sort of pockets and you'll lose some of that sharp line, line work you did with the blade. But that can be a positive if that's the effect you're after. 
On the right, you can see where I've used a water-based acrylic and it, you can see how it's retained that detail. It's a bit of a different look though, so it depends what you're going for. I actually sprayed this particular rock with, uh, with my minigun, which is just a, a large airbrush, um, but I found that was overkill. Really didn't need to do that. It's easy just to mix it down with a little bit of water to, and then just brush it on. And you just gotta make sure you dab it into all the, into all the cracks. The idea is to make sure you can't see any yellow. Um, and the best thing to do is take it outside when you think you're finished, turn it around different angles, and you most certainly find some yellow spots you missed, just touch them up when it's dry, and then you're good to go. Alright, here's phase two. I've got some grey paint here I've already mixed. It's mostly white. It's a little bit of black to give it that grey. The idea is to go from dark to light, loose to tight. I also add just a tiny smidge of provincial beige. That's because I airbrushed a little bit of warmth over the rest of the rocks on the layout. And this just gives it that just a tiny bit of warmth. Otherwise, the pure black and white comes out pretty cold. And you only want an absolute tiny little bit here, really. It's almost imper imperceivable. So now I've got a pretty warm grey here. I'm going to back this right off the brush. Get it right out. I'm going to start dry brushing this piece here. Now I'm going to go sort of down across from the top down because I don't want to fill the cracks. The cracks need to stay black. I'm even picking up paint from the bits of paint I've wiped onto the paper there. So I really don't want to get much on the brush. Really, all the flat spots on this rock should end up being reasonably grey and leaving the black in the cracks and then we'll go over it again final coat will be the highlights and that'll be pretty much a white you can go across in some areas where it's where it's flat just as long as you don't fill those grooves And if you hide, make sure you hide the brush strokes as well. The main thing we want to do here is create that depth in the rocks. Really show where light and dark are different. So I've actually, um, when I mix that lot, it's probably hard to see on the camera, but I actually got a bit more of the, of the beige in there than the first mix. That doesn't matter. A bit of variation is good. A lot of this is just about winging it. You do something that looks good, so you do it again. Now we can get some white and do the highlight. Now because this stuff is very thin, I can pretty well just start that, start that process straight away. I'm just going to grab a little bit of white and very lightly touch some of the some of the edges. The idea is here just to highlight the, the corners of the rock. Don't need to go over the whole face. You don't need to hit everything either. Just try and imagine where the sun's going to hit it. This is all just using water-based acrylics. Cheap paint, doesn't need to be fancy. These paints cost about a dollar each. What I've done here is I've added a little bit of talc powder and some tight bond glue and a little bit of black paint. 
Oh, a little bit more powder. What this does is gives me a thicker consistency for gluing. Because there's a couple of little gaps uh, where the new piece of rockwork is going to join onto the old piece. I just did a test fit. Look at that, that's nice and thick. And that will help fill the gaps. And when it dries, of course, you won't see the glue because it'll be black.